What's up everyone, Ben with the BTC Sessions here. Would you like to learn how to set up your own Bitcoin wallet on your mobile phone in a few short minutes? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. Now stick around, those of you that are also not newcomers to Bitcoin and you wanna see an interesting wallet that I quite like, we're gonna check out the HODL wallet. HODL the Bitcoin. The HODL wallet is available for both iPhone and Android, and it is actually a fork or a copy of another wallet called Bread Wallet. Now, a lot of people, early Bitcoiners, really liked Bread Wallet, but what happened? Well, they did an ICO, which many saw as illegitimate or more of a cash grab, and they started adding a ton of extra coins that many Bitcoiners did not have interest in. Well, because Bread Wallet was open source, somebody was able to take the code behind it and restore it back to its singular Bitcoin wallet glory. And that's what we're taking a look at today, the HODL wallet, a fork of Bread Wallet that is available for Android and iPhone. Let's dive into your setup. All right, so I've downloaded HODL Wallet from the Google Play App Store. Now we've got two options here. We can create a new wallet or recover a wallet. We're gonna be creating a new one, so we're gonna start from scratch. You need a six digit pin. We are going to use something simple for the purposes of this video. We're just gonna use a one, two, three, four, five, six, and it asks you to put it in again, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're set and ready to go. Now, we are going to get our backup recovery phrase here. This is essentially a set of 12 words that acts as a backup to your account. You need to write it down somewhere safe and do not lose it because if you lose your phone, then you rely on these words to recover your money. There is no recovery other than that. Now, Bread Wallet blanks out the screen here. You can't see anything, but essentially it's showing me, even though you can't see it via the screen recording, a set of 12 words, which I need to write down and then enter in safely afterwards. So they will ask me a couple of these words after I'm done writing them down, and I will come back after I have done that. A few moments later. Okay, so everything is finished. I've written down my seed phrase and confirmed it. And now you can just see it's syncing to make sure it's up to date with the Bitcoin blockchain or the, I guess, global ledger of Bitcoin transactions to get the latest. Now, while it's doing that up top, you can see my balance. I have a balance of zero, obviously, but you can rotate between dollars and Bitcoin or whatever your local currency is. You can see the price of Bitcoin in the top right hand corner. There is a search bar here where you can search for sending, received, pending transactions, anything like that. You can see there's a, an option for fingerprint authentication uh, that you can turn on and off. We're not gonna use it for this video, but it, the option is there. We'll just touch on this later. Okay, so down below you can see where your transactions will be when you've done some. You've got send, receive, and your menu button down below. Okay, now excuse the change in view, but HODL Wallet does not allow you to screen record while executing any sort of send or receive transaction, which is actually great for user privacy. It ensures that if your device is compromised, at least that is not an attack vector. Anyways, moving on, I have been playing with this a little bit now that it's set up. So you can see I have a couple of transactions uh, in and out of this wallet that are now displayed in the transaction field down below we can see a different balance we can say a Bitcoin balance and we can toggle that to see a dollar balance so now you can see what it looks like once it's been used a little bit let's take a look at the menu before we get into any real transactions so the menu is the bottom right hand corner you're gonna tap on it you've got a few things here you've got your security center so where you go here this is where you set up or change your six digit pin where you do your fingerprint authentication or you get your backup recovery key which was the 12 words we've already written down now if you tap on knowledge they have a large knowledge base uh, including some of the topics that we're covering here, receiving and sending Bitcoin, starting a new wallet, what do you see your backup recovery key? All this information is great, especially for newbies. Further down, we've got our settings and we've got a few things here. We've got sweeping a private key. Now, we're not gonna dive too deep into this, but I have done a video on 
a paper wallet and sweeping a paper wallet, if you'd like to learn about sweeping private keys, then go ahead and check out that video, which I will link down below in the description. Further, you've got start and recover another wallet, which is kind of what we just did, show a legacy address. We're not gonna dive into legacy addresses. Um, now also, we've got notifications, which you can turn on. You've got fingerprint authentication spending limit, so you can set a spending limit to uh, what you're allowed to do just with your fingerprint. You've got your display currency, so you can change between various different uh, local fiat currencies. But also you've got the choice of Bitcoin or bits, which is a smaller denomination. Now, I would prefer this to to be Bitcoins and Satoshis, which is the absolute smallest, uh, lowest value of a Bitcoin that you can get. It is, there are 100 million Satoshis in a Bitcoin for those newbies out there that are watching this. Anyways, going back, we've got a few other things here. We've got uh, an about, sync with blockchain, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're not gonna go deep into that, but I do wanna show something in the advanced. So for you advanced users, this I really, really enjoy. Bitcoin nodes, when you go into this, you can actually sync with your own home node on your computer or however you're running it. So all you have to do is down at the bottom here, it says switch to manual mode, and you would enter the IP address for your Bitcoin node. Now I am running my own CASA node. Uh, I have a the thing for it up in the background here because we're going to use that in a second but uh, there is a video that I did for that and that will be linked down below as well so please do check it out for those of you interested in what a Bitcoin node is and why you might run one. Let's get back out of here and that is pretty much it for the settings so let's go ahead and let's do some actual transactions. So when you go, let's let's do a send here first. We've already got some money in the wallet. Um, now, when you hit send, you've got a couple of options. For the to field, this is where you're designated where you're sending it to, you can paste or scan. So there are two different ways to get a Bitcoin address. One, I'm on my computer here. I've just brought up a QR code for a different Bitcoin wallet I have. Now, I could scan that by hitting the scan button here. It opens my camera, and once I scan it, this field is populated with some digits, which is a Bitcoin address. Now there's another way to get a Bitcoin address and I'm gonna show that. Uh, we'll just close that. Now I've got another wallet here on my phone called Samurai. It's probably my other favorite uh, wallet for mobile, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab my address from this wallet. So we'll skip ahead quickly, I pass my passcode. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into the receive screen. By the way, I have done a video on the Samurai wallet. I will link that down below as well if you wanna check it out, though it is for an older version. Now, most wallets, when you go into it, you will have the exact same thing as we've seen in a couple examples here, a QR code and a string of digits. And often they'll either be a thing where you can tap to copy it or you can just hold on it to copy. In this instance, if I tap, it will copy to the clipboard. So when I navigate back to the HODL wallet, I can simply hit the paste button and we'll paste what I've copied. Now, what we need to do is we need to designate how much money we're sending. So in the amount section, when you tap on it, you can again either do Bitcoin or dollars. So I'm going to do Bitcoin and I'm going to say 0 0.01 Bitcoin is what I would like to send. Um, now, once I've designated what I want, which by the way, I can switch that. So I, I could say, oh, I'm sending a penny, uh, but uh, no, I'm sending 0.01 Bitcoin to this wallet. Now, you can set your Bitcoin fees. Those of you unfamiliar, your fees determine how quickly your Bitcoin reaches its destination and is officially spendable. Now, this can vary depending on how busy the network is, uh, but essentially you can see if you swipe side to side, you can see the difference and how long it's likely your transaction will take to fully confirm and be spendable in the 
side right here right now. It says one to two hours. I've found that this wallet tends to overestimate how long it's going to take because I believe it's easier to have you pleasantly surprised than disappointed. So I'm just going to keep my fee to normal. And you also have the option to hit custom fee here where you can enter your Satoshis per byte. So those advanced users that know specifically what you want to spend, you can type that in here. Anyways, that is that. You can enter a note if you want. I do not want to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And I've got the option of using my fingerprint or entering my pin. Just for speed, I will use my fingerprint. And that is it. It is sent off. And I should receive it in my other wallet momentarily. So let's just take a peek over at Samurai. And there we go. I can see a transaction coming in and it's successful. Now we're just going to do the exact opposite. We're going to receive some Bitcoin to our HODL wallet. Really simple. Down at the bottom, you hit receive. You've got your QR code, which you could scan with a wallet, but we're going to copy. So we're just going to tap and it copies to the clipboard. I'll navigate out to Samurai and I'm going to send off to that address that I'm pasting into the clipboard. 0 0.01 Bitcoin review and send and I should get a notification actually from Hoda Wallet I believe there we go okay so that has been sent off and if I head back to my Hoda Wallet now if you'll notice the address and the QR code actually did just change now new users don't freak out that is a an anonymity feature every time you receive money to your address or to your wallet it will create a new address don't worry about sending twice to an old address in terms of losing funds that will not happen so don't worry about somebody resending to an old address but it is good practices to new, use a new address for each transaction Anyways, we go out and I can see an incoming transaction for the amount that I just sent out of Samurai Wallet. Now this video was originally going to be a video for Bread Wallet, but I became concerned when I noticed the ICO sitting on the landing uh, main screen of their wallet. And I took to Twitter and I asked your opinions of whether I should bother doing a video. And I'm very happy that people recommended this one to me. This is now probably one of my favorite mobile wallets for Bitcoin right next to Samurai Wallet. Why? A couple of reasons. Well, I really like that they have Beck 32 addresses, which is native SegWit. If you're new to Bitcoin, that may be a little bit of Greek sounding language to you, but it is a good thing. Um, further to that, I really like that you can set this up to work with your own node at home. I didn't touch on it too deeply, but I did show that close to the end there. And for those of you newbies that are around that are curious about running your own node, I did do a video on the CASA node, which I will link down below so you can learn about a simple plug and play model that you can buy plug in and be running your own copy of the Bitcoin blockchain so you don't have to trust any third party to verify your transactions. With that guys, I thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to like, subscribe and share this video and check out all of my other material. I'll see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.